Hello everybody and welcome to Film in a Bullet. My name is Isabella. I'm a film and TV graduate who started to enjoy bullet journaling last year during quarantine. I decided to start my own bullet journal and later on my own film and TV journal and I thought it'd be great to bring you guys with me. We're gonna go straight to the video because it's quite a long one. I had tons of hours of footage and if I had not cut as much as I had, this first video would have lasted three hours. Therefore, I do apologize if it's quite bumpy or jumpy, but I had to cut a lot of my writing process uh, because it was just too long. This is my title page. I'm literally just writing Film and TV Journal 2021 in a very simple font with my brush pen and what, with my fine liner, and then I just drew some circles around it and added up some stars that sort of represent the rating. I tried to keep it as simple as possible because uh, I think it's easier for me to handle bullet journals if I don't focus too much on the doodling and the drawing and the very super complicated and beautiful spreads that I see online. Uh, and I think it's the best way for me to uh, bullet journal, but uh, obviously it's always incredible to see what people can do in their bullet journal and how beautiful they look. Moving on, this is the Grid Spacing Cheat Sheet. I saw it for the first time on Amanda Rach Lee's channel. She uh, is one of the first people that I started to follow on YouTube and Instagram uh, when it came down to bullet journaling. It's brilliant what she does and she's got so much content that you can go through. Uh, I copied this from her. I saw it for the first time on her channel. I'm not sure if it's something that she created, but it's absolutely useful when it comes down to making your spreads. You don't have to count up the squares every single time and you've got the page already divided in halves or thirds or by four or six. So it's just absolutely useful if you're bullet journaling. I'm just writing grid spacing cheat sheet to add a bit of, I don't want to say decoration, but you know, to to make the page a bit dynamic and then I use my brush pen to make the black line in which I'm gonna write cheat sheet with my white pen later on. This is my quote page. I found this quote on Pinterest and thought it was the best quote to add to my film and TV bullet journal. The reason why I love film and TV so much is because there's so many stories to to watch so many things to experience and it's always brilliant to be drawn into a new story to be drawn into something new so uh, i thought it was the perfect perfect quote to add uh, this was my first time trying to shape a quote page without actually having a reference and i found that combining different calligraphy fonts and just trying to make the page dynamic is not as easy as I thought. I struggled a lot with trying to make this look nice but I'm actually quite happy with the result because um, I worked on it quite a lot and I found fonts on Pinterest that I enjoyed and I tried to copy and I'm just very very happy with the result. Uh, I made some mistake on the page itself. You can see the G is not perfect at all. There's so many issues with it and I tried to fix it but the more I fixed it the more it looked worse so I just let it be and try to accept the fact that I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes bullet journaling and I should just embrace the mistakes rather than try and fix them, which is also a good philosophy to apply to your daily life. Uh, but yeah, I thought uh, it was better to just leave it the way it was. Uh, here's me attempting to do a, a drop shadow, which I quite enjoy, I think they give death to the page, but I can't keep a straight line apparently. And then I added some washi tapes. Uh, you know, to decorate the page. Moving on, this is my movie watch list spread. Uh, I attempted, because it's always an attempt, to uh, draw a film reel and I'm actually quite happy with the result. I think it looks quite nice. I use my fine liner main, mainly for doodling and then I also use my brush pen uh, to fill in the 
blanks uh, that you see on the border. Uh, you'll see it later on. Uh, I made mistakes in this page too. I didn't intend to go over on the second page on that top half uh, doodling, of, no, that top half drawing, but I tried to make it uh, as nice as possible. And, and you know, in the end, it, it turned out fine. Um, for what concerns the fonts that I use throughout the videos, they're roughly always the same. I do like uh, writing in cursive with this one and then, and then just bulking up on uh, the side that goes down. I don't really know how to explain that. I think it, it I think it's quite nice and it, again, it makes the the page a bit more dynamic and nice. Um, this is what I was talking about before, I just filled in the the blanks on the drawing with my brush pen and then I'm just gonna draw some uh, small lines with my white pen uh, to make it a bit nicer and this is me just adding in a couple of movies that I really want to watch and that are part of my watch list um, that you can check out on box actually uh, the link will be below and uh, that it's basically gonna include films that I want to watch and uh, films that are recommended to me. Oh, and yeah, now I just went back because I forgot to write cheat sheet on the previous page. But I'm just completing the page and then moving on to my TV series watch list. This is basically the same concept. I'm gonna write everything that I want to watch. Uh, I assign to both watch lists a couple of pages because I tend to have a lot of films in my watch list. Uh, but I have way more in my uh, TV series watch list because I gravitate towards TV way more. Um, I attempted to doodle a couple of TVs uh, because I thought they were the best way to sort of um, decorate the page. And then I wrote in a couple of TV series too that I think uh, I am gonna watch. Actually, no. I definitely have to watch Euphoria. Uh, it's been in my watch list for ages and I never actually got around to it. But it's receiving a lot of praises and Zendaya just won, well just was a few months ago, but she won an Emmy for it. And I'm just very, very curious to actually watch the series. So I hope I'm gonna be able to in the next few weeks. Next is my scripts read pages. As you can see, I wrote in pencil TBR but then I realized this is not a TBR this is an actual list of scripts that I read I tend to read scripts of the content that I really enjoy of the content that I really like um, I think this is from my university degree uh, this is something that I used to do in university so I'm gonna try and stick to it uh, now too because it's very important for well somebody that wants to be a writer like me to read as much as I can um, it's a simple uh, very simple page it's just two three columns in which I have to write the title by whom it's written and the date uh, I try to decorate it with some washi tapes I'm not happy with it I might change it in the future if it really bothers me. Moving on, this is my 2020 most anticipated releases. Uh, I've got one page dedicated to movies and one page dedicated to TV series. Um, again, it's a very, very simple spread in which I'm going to write the title, uh, the release date and the rating of the show itself or the movie itself. Uh, I tried to decorate it a little. That's my attempt to draw a small TV. I think it looks like a computer monitor, but you know, we watch a lot of TV on laptops now, so it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a very um, important page for me to keep because it's different from my watch list. This is the things that I really need to watch because I am really excited about them. Some of the movies I'm really excited about are Cherry by the Russo's Brother, starring Tom Holland, and Malcolm and Marie by Sam Levinson, starring Zendaya and John David Washington. I'm looking forward to the Marvel TV series, especially on the Vision, which I think is going to be bonkers. And I'm looking forward to the next season of The Handmaid's Tale. And, and despite the situation in the industry, especially considering the COVID emergency, there's still gonna be a lot of movies and there's still gonna be a lot of series coming out in the next year and I'm really looking forward to it. And here we 
go on to the most annoying spread that I've had to do for my uh, film journal. I found this challenge on Pinterest and I found it very interesting. I thought it was a nice way to push myself to watch more movies or to find a way to watch more movies when I'm stuck and I'm not really sure what to watch. So I decided to make it a bit more dynamic since on Pinterest it was literally just a list. And I decided to create those little boxes in which I'm gonna put the movie poster, I'm gonna print it out and then attach it to the journal. And uh, as you can see now, I am writing on the side a 52 uh, movie challenge. And now I'm writing next to each little box what the challenge actually is. So we've got, for example, an inspirational movie, uh, a movie with a uh, a one more title, etc, etc. I kept doing this for a while. I basically wrote every single one of the entries on the original list and then added the numbers uh, in the boxes just because I thought it was cute. Uh, I proceeded to do the same things in the following pages. As you can see, I'm making some more boxes. It was quite a tedious thing to do but I actually am happy about the way it looks and then I decided to cut on the side of the page in order for me not to write 52 movie challenge again and it's sort of a Dutch door I guess it's very similar to that concept this that's where I you know uh, I took inspiration from but yeah I did it a couple of times in order for me to uh, reached the 52 boxes that are, are supposed to be part of the challenge and uh, again it was very long and I counted it wrong therefore I didn't split the pages the best way possible as you can see there's a big gap in the middle but I put some washi tapes and left a space in the middle to add what my favorite film of the 52 on the list is and what my least favorite film of the 52 on the list is. As you can see soon I'm using my Sakura white gel pen uh, to write in on black. Uh, this is quite a great pen, I'm, I'm actually really fond of them even though they're not my favorite white gel pen. Uh, and moving on, this is my Studio Ghibli uh, spread. I basically just wrote in every single one of the Studio Ghibli film I could find because I have to say I've never watched one and if I have, I don't really remember it. So I'm trying to get through as many of them as possible. So as you can see, I basically wrote in every film as a checklist and I'm gonna check the ones I watch as the year passes. and. And at the bottom of the page, I added some washi tape. Uh, as you can see, it's roughly always the same washi tape. I think those are my favorite out of the ones that I have. And I think they make the page a tiny bit nicer. And moving on to my Disney film spread. This is a spread that I didn't intend to make, but a few days ago, I found a Disney spread that I made on some random paper when I was younger and it was basically a selection of some Disney films that I really wanted to watch and I tried to check those that I had already seen and see how many still I had left. Obviously this is not all the Disney films ever made, that would be impossible, these are the Disney films made that I'm interested in and I added some newer releases or films that are coming out this year that I'm interested in watching. I really hope I'll be able to complete this because making this spread was very tiring. As you can see, I have assigned a color to different type of Disney films. So we've got animated, live action, hybrid, or Disney Channel original movie. Because and I took uh, the idea from, again, a spread that I found online you can go look at it in my pinterest it's under challenges i think i don't know how i feel about the spread it's quite colorful and it's the most colorful spread out of um the entire bullet journal and, and as you can see i've watched quite a lot of disney films that i was interested in and i'm not too happy with this spread but it's 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 done, so 
I'm just gonna keep checking the boxes. Moving on, we've got my Directed by Women spread. Now, I don't know if two pages are gonna be enough, but I do intend to watch more content made by women and directed by women. Whether it comes down to movies or TV episodes, I just want to support more women and their incredible work because in this industry they are usually not considered at the same level as men. So I thought it was very important to push myself to watch more and more content uh, made by women. As you can see on my letterbox, there's actually a list of movies made uh, by women and there's tons of movie in that list, but I only watched like a hundred and I am not proud of it. I think I should watch more uh, content directed by women, but most of the time content directed by men is pushed down our throats. So I thought this would be an interesting spread to have to look back onto when I'm done with the year. Moving on, here's my top 25 movies of 2021. Uh, this is something that I'm obviously gonna fill out at the end of the year in December. I did something similar uh, as the 52 movies challenge. I just made some little boxes that I'm gonna fill in uh, with movie posters that I print out later in the year. Uh, I also attempted to do another doodle which ended very badly. I'm so not happy with the way that looks because I tried to, uh, you know, fix the issues that I <laughs> that I created myself, and then uh, it just didn't end up looking what I wanted it to look. But I I've learned something with bullet journaling, and that is that you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna have to embrace those mistakes so i'm also trying to apply that philosophy to my life it looked better like this with nothing else going on but as you can see later on i tried to fill in uh, the blank on the side and it just it went downhill anyway i'm gonna embrace this mistake and <laughs> But yeah, as I've said before, I'm not gonna dwell on it too much, so I'm just gonna let it be, even though it's not oh, what I wanted. But you know, the page is gonna be filled in at the end of the year, so if by then I just wanna change it, I'll do it. So as you can see now, I'm filling in the boxes with numbers, starting from one next to the title and going up to 25 at the end of the other page. It's a weird order, but I thought it was nice and different. So, here we go! And as you can see, I tried to make the same uh, spread for TV series. Um, that's actually gonna be, I think, way harder than picking movies, because as I've told you, I watch way more TV than films, so... It's gonna be very interesting to fill out this spread at the end of the year. We'll see how that goes. Um, the doodle in this page came out way nicer than the one uh, in the previous page. I drew uh, a slate which uh, I think looks quite decent for my first attempt. Uh, but yeah, I mean, basically this is the same uh, layout. Uh, as I told you before, I tried to do something very simple and minimalistic ish so um, I tend to use the same kind of writing uh, in fonts and lettering and whatever in most of the pages because those are the ones that I feel more comfortable um, using and as before I just filled in the boxes with the numbers and later on when I finish the year I will just put the movie poster or the TV series poster inside the little box and now we have reached the final two spreads of the film and tv bullet journal their stats spread i am basically uh creating something that will help me track uh, the amount of content that i watch yearly and the genre that i uh, consume the most uh, so between drama comedy sci-fi etc 
which genre I tend to gravitate towards to the most. For my stats page, I didn't do anything particular, I just made two graphs in which there's a list of the month and the amount of films or TV episodes that I can watch, and I'm gonna try and, you know, keep track of the number of things that I watch. I just wanted a place in which I can look at visually at the end of the year to see how much content I actually consumed. It's, it's, I thought it would be fun to have that uh, inside the, the journal and I didn't think it through again too much. It was just something that I really wanted in. And uh, at, next to the graphs, I, uh, as you can see, I used my uh, brush pen to draw some straight lines. Uh, well, not so straight, but <laughs> you know what I mean. And wrote in with my gel pen, movie watched throughout the year, and a number of episodes, a number of TV series watched throughout the year. I thought it would be a nice track record to have. Moving on to the genre one, I basically took the idea behind Here in the Pixels. I basically took the idea behind Here in Pixels, which I've seen everywhere around the bullet journal community, and turn it around for genre. It's basically the same graph, it's not different at all. There's the name of the month at the top, and on the side, there's um, the number representing uh, each day of the year basically and as you can see I'm writing down the genre that I consume the most I think and uh, basically it's just a way to track uh, what I like to watch and what I should watch more because I always think that if there's one genre that you don't consume as much you should push yourself to try and look more into uh, those and see if you can find an appeal to them. Um, and this is just me selecting colors for each one of the genre and then filling it in so that you guys know what this spread is gonna look like. The year has started so I know what I've watched so far and thought it'd be great to show you guys what this is gonna look. Now we're going back at the beginning because I'm using some of the parts of pages that I cut previously for my 52 years challenge to cover up the index part of the journal. I don't think I'm really gonna use the index but the pages were there and I thought I could use it to create a general key for my film and TV bullet journal. I thought it'd be great to have it all in one place so that I don't have to repeat it for every every spread. So as you can see I've got stars for rating, R means rewatch, F means first time watching, I've got notes and comments and I've got a little heart for favorite and I've got this bit about where I watched the movie or the TV series so on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus etc etc at the cinema and then I've got the tiny little uh, box about not watched or watched and in my TV event movie event key which would be better explained in my next video uh, which is my uh, January setup. I know the January setup is gonna come in quite late because it's coming out next week, but I thought I'd give you guys an idea of what the journal is gonna look like throughout the year. And here we are on the final flip through of the pages created so far. I have to say that I'm really proud of what the journal looks like overall. I'm not happy with a couple of things as I told you, but you know, in the end, I'm I think I am really gonna enjoy filling this in instead of, you know, using as usual my solely my uh, digital apps. I think this is gonna be great for me and I'm actually very, very excited to take you guys on this journey and share this with you and all my content with you. Everything that I have nominated so far is gonna be linked in the description box and you can follow me on social media to be updated on my content. I really hope you enjoyed this first video and I really hope you're gonna hit that subscribe button. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.